YouTube. I'm back, day four of tutorial miss. If this is your first video this month, what I'm doing is I'm uploading one video every day for every day of December, so 31 videos in 31 days. If you haven't checked those out already, there'll be a playlist in the description and at the end of the video in the end card. All right, guys, real quick. First off, check the cut. Got a fresh cut. Ooh. I just want to let you guys know that while I was editing this, I realized that I can get a video up every day at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I'm going to be premiering those around that time. I'm just going to be in the premiere chat talking with you guys. So if you guys have any questions while you're watching the video, you guys can ask away and I'll just be in there the whole time it's premiering so we can watch the video together. All right, back into the video. For today's video, we're going to be going over this low shutter speed effect that uh, White Trash Tyler does in a lot of his videos. Uh, he did it here in this Jack Boys music video. Uh, it's the Gang Gang music video. So it's done here. Obviously, ours is going to look different because it's going to be all digital. But uh, here's what I came up with. I think that looks pretty cool. And then we're going to be doing a different part. Uh, so what, what I found basically is if you're doing it on footage that you recorded or someone else did, it's better for a handheld shot. So if you're trying to plan it out, just because like the movement or whatever, it makes it look more natural. Like I tried it on this, uh, there's a stabilized shot of him. It looks all right. I didn't really finish the effect because I could just tell that it wasn't going to look like right. I would definitely go with more handheld shots that are a little bit shaky. And I think the effect looks a little bit better if it's like a night shot. It doesn't have to be, but that's just my... Uh, opinion. All right, so this one's a pretty quick tutorial. We're just going to hop right into the effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I already clipped uh, where I want this effect to take place. I want it to be normal here and go into the echo or the low shutter, I mean, and then right around here, hop back out. So it's kind of going to be like laggy here while he's crossing over the camera and it's going to pop back out. So the first thing we're going to do is type in echo and underneath time, there'll be echo. Drag that on. Then we're going to go to effect controls over here. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to click screen. You can play around with the blending modes, but I like screen. And then we're going to turn up the echo number to five or something. And then turn the decay down to 0.8. So basically it just gets 20% more transparent every frame. So there's five of them, if that makes sense. And then you can play around with the echo time. I like anywhere from default. And then I go anywhere up to like negative 0.1, negative like 0.15 is probably like the max I'd go. It all depends on your clip and how much movement there is. The more movement, there is the shorter you do it because the trails will be further along anyways. So for this one, I'm thinking like negative like 0.1 or something. And we're gonna be going here and just rendering this out. Just see what this looks like with this first effect here. So you can already see that looks pretty crazy, right? It goes from dark here and then it goes super light. So how we correct that is we type in a metric color, here, drag that on. And then what you're gonna wanna do is find this comparison view and click that and then on the left hand side, it will be the reference. So you're just gonna wanna find where you're at in your timeline. I'm here like a minute 29, a minute 30. So we're gonna go to that point right before it. Like right there is good. It's the same scene so you can see the colors. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna match the colors. And then we're gonna go into our Lumetri color here and we're gonna type in like negative two exposure. Obviously your clip's gonna be different so play around with that. But what I'm trying to do is just make it a little less exposed because the echoes are overlaying over it and each layer is getting making it brighter. And then uh, I like to go to curves second. Oh shit, my mouse is dying. We gotta hurry. And then just make the blacks a little bit more black here. And basically what you're doing is just matching. And then one, one thing you can really do that helps out a lot is if you go to color wheels and match. And since you're already on the reference, you can just click apply match and it's gonna match the colors pretty well. That I think helps out a lot. And then we can add some contrast, the blacks, bring them up a little bit just so they're slightly a little bit less black, but also at the same time, I'm gonna be bringing in contrast. Everything else is looking pretty good right now, highlights. And then I notice once you like add a lot of curves and contrast, it brings up saturation. So I'm just gonna bring it down to like 90 or something, maybe 85. So that looks pretty good. I think that's pretty similar. You can spend a lot of time tweaking it, but for right now, this, uh, this works for me. So now we can render this out. It already has that uh, echo trail effect here. And then we can go out of comparison mode. And then I'm not really liking how delayed the echoes are. It looks it looks a little off. So I'm just gonna make it a little less. Negative 0 0.0, try eight or something right now. Render that out and see that what that looks like. It's looking a little bit better. I think I'm gonna go a little shorter is a little bit more. Like maybe like negative 0.055. Let's see what that does. I think, I think that's just the default one actually. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna be testing around here. We're gonna go 0 
right, that looks good enough for me. Uh, you can spend as much time as you want playing around with these numbers. You can uh, adjust the echo. You can even do different modes, but uh, you'll have to correct the color again. For right now, screen looks good. And now it just looks too fluent, right? So what we're gonna do is go into posterize and drag the posterize time effect on. What that does is right now, since we're in a 24 frame composition right now, the footage was shot at 24 frames per second and it's the frame rate set to 24. It's not gonna affect the video at all right now. It's gonna play completely normal. So what we want this to do is we want it to extend each frame or extend one frame for a certain amount of time, like say like one frame then lasts three frames. So you change it and it's kind of like a freeze frame, if that makes sense. So the equation for that is, yeah, we're doing a little bit of math here, 24. And then whatever number you put here, you just divide 24 by that. So say you were to put eight here, you would divide 24 by eight and that would give you three. So if you can see here, you can see that each frame will last one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I like eight, it looks pretty good, but I think I'm gonna do something more like where it's slower. So now I put in three, so 24 divided by three is now eight. So now each frame is gonna last eight seconds. This probably is gonna be too long and I'll probably have to go into the middle. Yeah, so that's too long. I'm gonna do something like five. All right, so I ended up actually changing into four and I think I wanna make this, now that I see it with the posterized time effect on, I think I wanna make the echoes a little bit longer. So we're gonna go negative 0.085, Let's see what that looks like. It's all about just changing the effects a little bit by a little bit, just kind of, tweaking it till you find something that you like. And like I said, everyone's footage is gonna be different because of the movement, the colors, everything. So just take the concepts and apply them to your video. All right, I'm liking the way that looks. And then you can add some shake to your video. Uh, I used on this one, I nested it first and then I added universe shake and here we'll play it with it and play without. So that's with it. And that's without it. So it, it doesn't do too much. It sells the effect a little bit more. So I'll show you how to do that. What I did is I nested the clip. If you want to go back, you can hold Alt and drag that up and then nest it. And the reason I'm nesting it is because when I was applying the effect, the it was just giving me like issues for some reason. Sometimes when an effect doesn't work properly in uh, Premiere with other effects, I just nest it and that kind of is like a workaround of it. So we're looking for universe shake, camera shake, and then dragging that on. And going back to the effect controls, we're gonna make the master amount 25%. Frequency uh, might be good on one, we'll see. Scale footage, shake. We're gonna turn motion blur all the way on, kind of just makes it seem like it would just fit the effect better. Render this out, see what this looks like, and then we'll tweak the settings a little bit. All right, so first thing I noticed was the frequency of it wasn't matching the uh, like the cuts in frames, so like from that one to that one, it's like moving in between. So what you can do is you can just change the frequency down to maybe like something like 0.5, see how that fits. And that looks good. I like the way that looks a lot. It's basically, the shake's just basically adding another layer of like handheldness. Slight difference, you guys probably can't even notice, but just something you can do. And then another thing I'm actually gonna do, scale in the footage, like to like 125. You can uh, actually just go ahead and keyframe the position of the camera. So it like feels more of like a jitter between each one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna focus on having check OS in the middle. So what you do is you apply keyframes and then go right before it, it goes to the next frame, keyframe, go to the next frame, then apply what you want. So I'm just gonna click on motion, so that way I can drag it. And then, like I said, go right before the frame, keyframe, then on that frame, click motion, drag it in the middle. And there we go, I applied all the keyframes. I keyframe the motion, or the uh, scale, you don't have to, cause I actually didn't change it, so I'm just gonna delete all those, turn off the keyframe. But you can scale in differently each frame or whatever, if you want to. I'm gonna render this out, and then we're gonna see what that looks like. And play that. And there's like a weird jump right here. Oh, I see what happened. I accidentally put the keyframes in the wrong frame. So just moving that one frame back should fix that. Yeah, that's what. That's why you keyframe before it changes to the next frame, because if not, then it just looks off. And I like the way that looks. If I'm critiquing it, I guess I probably would uh, change the posterize effect again. I'd make it uh, so it's a little faster. It seems like it's a little too choppy, but you guys get the idea. You can add more effects like some like RGB split or something. RGB, maybe like RGB separation from universe. Just something like really slight, like maybe like three, or four. And then what I did here is I went to speed and duration. You can change the blending modes. I don't know if it does much, to be honest. I felt like it did something. Maybe it made it look a little smoother or whatever. That's the final effect we came up with here. 
I think that's really cool. I, I like the way that looks a lot. And obviously, if there was like music here or whatever, it looked really cool. You'd like do it on like a kick or like a clap or something. And it's definitely a, an effect. Once you get it done once for the music video, you can copy and paste. Like, say you were to go here, go to your effects control. You can copy and paste pretty much everything besides the Lumetri color. Unless it's the same scene, then you can copy that as well. Pretty much just copy and paste the effect throughout the music video uh, tastefully or whatever. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the video, guys. Appreciate you guys making it all the way to the end. If you have any video tutorial ideas, leave them in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.